tight ends are a quarterback's best friend, especially if you happen to be a young quarterback. A lot of fire at that position in this preseason. We're going to run it down for you. Who's standing at the tight end position for this rookie class today on Locked On NFL Draft? You are Locked On NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Show. I am your host, former NFL and AFL defensive back, Eric Crocker. And of course, as always, I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan Tracy from Rogan Analytics and Locked On Chiefs. I am at Eric underscore Crocker on Twitter. You can also find me on Locked On 49ers. And we got Ryan Tracy at Ryan Tracy NFL on Twitter as well. We want to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Uh, We're talking tight ends today. And obviously, you know, a lot of people watch the Sunday night game, Baltimore Ravens out there with the Arizona Cardinals. And there was one guy that caught everybody's eye. There was? And that happened to be a guy who was targeted eight times, had eight receptions for 100 yards, none other than Isaiah Likely out of Coastal Carolina. You, you, yeah, we're going to talk about his performance and what it looked like and what some of the guys in the booth were raving about. But first... If you have your stuff pulled up, can you tell us why did he slide? All right, we'll, we'll bring up some of your uh, rankings. We'll share the list yeah, right here. And we have Isaiah Likely there sitting at this sixth spot. And what were some of the things that kind of stood out to you? Because this is a guy who I think when you watch him play, he was very athletic. He looked like a big play guy. But then he went and tested and ran a 4-8. And we yeah. knew like that that's going to drop a guy who's supposed to be a pass catching receiver. So what sure. were some of the things that you saw? And then we'll tie that in with, with some of the things we saw in his uh, game against the Arizona Cardinals Sunday night. Yeah, I mean, he was he was a conundrum for us. Uh, me and my staff over at Rogue APC, we put together this, and you said it exactly, like, on our notes, on what we saw on film, he looked athletic, he looked smooth, he had quick feet. Like, all of our notes said, hey, he's a pass catcher that can get open in space. And then he came to the combine. You see here, his athleticism rank here at 17 out of this class. That's just within the tight ends. That was like alarming because his production was there, number three, and his film grade, we had him number two. So there was a lot to it that just didn't match up. And I think now it is about creativity. It is about usage. It's, it's about emphasizing what you get from the way that he moves, not necessarily how fast that he moves. And I still think even watching that ball game the other night, he's faster than he measured. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, but you know what is really cool when you kind of think of your athletic matrix and the formula that y'all use and right there having his film grade. At number two, right? Like, so that's someone who, hey, on film, he looks like a legit prospect. And I like how y'all do that where you break it down because you can like someone's film, but then if the the relative athletic score or your athletic uh, matrix score doesn't match up with what you saw on film, that kind of tells you a little bit more of traditionally how things translate to the NFL. Obviously, well, Isaiah Likely, it didn't matter. And I think a lot of it didn't matter because of how he was winning in the game, right? This is a guy who did an amazing job against the Arizona Cardinals of finding the open spots and understanding how to sit in zones. He did a terrific job of showing his numbers to the quarterback, being that safety blanket, catching the ball, and then what he was doing after the catch, which we saw those things at Coastal Carolina. But okay, how is it going to translate to the NFL? Now, context, the, he wasn't going against ones. So you have to take right. that into consideration. But even then, the biggest thing I'm watching for, especially for a lot of these rookies, is do they look like a starter amongst backups? And I think most people coming away from that game saw that. So much to the point where you know, there were a lot of people on social media talking about it. And some of these teams that drafted tight ends, they're mm-hmm. like, dude, why did we take the tight end? We took over Isaiah Likely, who ended up being the ninth tight end taken so kind of I guess that smashed right between some of the metrics that y'all use film yeah. grade number two the athletic score number 17 they put those together and was like okay he's kind of middle of the pack that's where they took him all right and not did not only did Baltimore take him you know being the ninth tight end they took somebody over him Charlie right. Kohler right all right so uh what are you expecting to see from him because that is a guy who I know you like as well yeah, I like him a ton, and he was really productive. That's why. And so I felt athletically he can translate. 
film wise he can translate a little bit of both like uh charlie was was not great he was not in the top 10 of the tight end class like a couple other guys that we'll talk about here coming up but the two of them together i really like because mark andrews at least to the fantasy world is the best tight end in football right He's certainly in the conversation behind Travis Kelsey and George Kittle, our, our tight ends. I like and that. And Darren Waller. Yeah, Darren okay, Waller. okay, fair enough. But I mean, certainly he's, he's in the top five and he's in that conversation. But there's a lot of ways, especially if you're a team that maybe wants to get back to being able to run the ball like the Ravens did a couple of years ago, by using 12 and 13 personnel as your predominant personnel packages. I love that idea because – the difference is that Andrews, I think, is an all-around. You line him up the Y, you'd be happy. I think, Charlie, you need to split out. And I think, Isaiah, you want to run as an H most of the time. So now you got three disparate positions that are all tight ends, quote-unquote, that give you different looks and different kinds of things. I really liked what Likely did in terms of leverage once he did get out into space. And like you said, what he's seeing in zone matchups here in, in the, the, the preseason, he's got an instinctual ability to settle down where he needs to be. If that can continue against top defenses – I don't see why when Charlie gets back from injury, they can't have a three tight end set that's a monster. And with the team that they have, I mean, they are, I can see them running three tight end sets, especially if one of those guys is a legit threat to be a pass catcher. Really not one of those guys. Two of those guys, like, really good at that. And hopefully we continue to see uh, Isaiah likely succeed in that department. All right, when we come up next, we're going to talk about some other guys who – Maybe dealing with different things. Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin with the Dallas Cowboys. Jeremy Rucker with Ohio State. Out of Ohio State with the New York Jets. And we're going to mention a few other guys. But first, we want to talk to you about our good partners over with AG1. All right. That's our next partner here. And they have a product that I literally use every single day. I started actually using AG1 originally because they sent it to us, right? They say, hey, we want you to try this product. You might like it. If you do talk about it, talk about some of your experiences. And I'm like, okay, you know, sometimes they send this stuff and you just kind of force to say something. But this was one of those that was definitely a pick me up and gave me so much energy to where now my wife and I, we've ordered it two separate times outside of the package that they sent us. All right. This is everything that you need in the sense of getting your vitamins, a lot of nutrition, getting your greens. It's an all in one. All right, and that's the one thing that I really love about this. With one delicious scoop of AG1, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food, super source foods. All right, probiotics, uh, they have everything that you need there. All right, uh, the price not much all right it costs you less than three dollars a day you are investing into your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit it's cheaper than getting all the different supplements that a lot of people get all right and you are investing in an all-in-one nutritional insurance all right it's recommended by professional athletes it's trusted by leading health experts such as tim ferris uh, michael gervis all right this is something that you need to be taking every single day it was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplemental routine to recover. It cost him over $100 per day. So he created Athletic Greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal nutritional routine on his own. All right, right now, it's time for you to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with a convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every single day that's it just one scoop all right no need for a million different pills a million different supplements to look out for your health and to make it easy athletic greens is going to give you one free year supply of immune system supporting vitamin d and five free travel packs with your first purchase all right all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right, guys, want to thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen every day. And you already know what time it is, man. It is Fantasy Draft Week on the Locked On Podcast Network, however you play. All right, however you play, the experts from the Locked On Fantasy Football and Locked On Dynasty Football bring you daily positional top 10 list to get you ready for your fantasy draft seasons. All right, find Locked On Fantasy Football and Locked On Dynasty Football on YouTube or wherever you find your podcast. So, Ryan, let's discuss some of these other 
uh, players and tight ends and kind of what they're doing right now. You got Jake Ferguson out of Wisconsin with the Dallas Cowboys. How has his preseason started and can he find his little niche and maybe potentially be the Dallas Cowboys tight end too? You know, on a, um, an offense that already has one, I'm really excited for him because, yes, Isaiah's been exploding, right? And, and Isaiah likely has been at 12 yards per reception. Well, Jake Ferguson's right behind him at 11.6. So he's five for five, no drops. He's catching everything thrown his way, just like likely is. It's just that it's not as featured, let's say, because there are other weapons on that team. There is a tight end in front of him. But I really like the way that it's going for Jake because Jake was, I think, undervalued and underappreciated in the draft process. And he's a guy that, that doesn't have to be the feature, but he will come up and make plays for you when you need it most. I think he's showing that so far. So he's a guy that might not have the bright spotlight on him, like likely, but he's right behind him there in terms of the actual production that he's putting up. Yeah, and these guys, I mean, you got to look at some of the offenses that they came in. And when you look at a guy like, you know, Jake Ferguson, especially at Wisconsin, I mean, how much did they run the ball, right? Like that's one of their primary uses of their offense. They run the ball a ton and they run it well. They run mm -hmm. it well and they require these guys to block a lot. Kind of reminds me of a certain tight end, San Francisco, George Kittle. When he was at Iowa, what did they do a lot, man? They would run the rock. And, you know, he suffered. His stats suffered because of it not blocking. He did a ter terrific job of that. I actually like the thoughts of getting somebody who you feel has enough athleticism, but also takes a lot of pride in run blocking and knowing that he can do that with his fits, block out in space. And then, all right, if he's a good athlete, we can utilize that as we develop the other aspects of his game. Another uh, tight end that probably didn't produce statistically the way that you would think is probably mm -hmm. Jeremy Ruckert out of Ohio State, and yep. he's with the New York Jets now. And Ruckert is different. I mean, we just talked about uh, Jake Ferguson and the offense that he was in, super uh, pass heavy, I mean, run heavy, excuse me. Now, you got Jeremy Ruckert over at Ohio State, and as much as they throw the ball, he was never – really productive the way that you think that he could and they relied heavily on their three receivers i mean come on now you got chris olave you got yeah. uh jackson smith and jigba you got and gary uh, wilson i mean gary wilson come on right i mean you know, so much weapons in the office and it almost was like hey your tight end is kind of the forgotten guy and he right. had some nice catches in in uh the college football postseason uh catching passes from justin fields but you just never saw his ability really take off can he be a little bit more for the New York Jets? I think he can be a lot more. I think part of this is the quarterback gets hurt early in the Jets preseason. They're playing again tonight. We'll get another look at him. I think in the end, it's about taking your opportunities and making the most of them. He's using short situations, right? Two catches for a total of three yards. One of them was a touchdown. So, like, you're getting goal line looks, and I think that's incredibly good for what Ruckert is because I think he's a guy that has also shown that he's reliable. When you got big weapons like he had it in college – it does take a little bit of, oh, he can actually do this. We can rely on him. But I think Rucker has shown all through his tape, and now he's beginning to do it now, even though it's not a ton of yardage, that he's going to catch the ball when you throw it to him. You know, if you have a solid quarterback, and we don't know who that is going to be week one, but knock on wood, it'll be the guy that you want it to be. But I don't know if that's going to happen. But he's going to help out on, who, who do they want it to be? Because you, get, you, well. you hear these different <laughs> stories come out of there. It's like, okay, is it going to be Joe Flacco? Like, they're saying he looked like the best guy all through training camp and preseason. But you have Zach Wilson, who you're developing. So, real quick, not to put you on the spot, but who do they want the starting quarterback to be? Like, if you were a coach, right? Because, again, coach, your, your job is always on the line, it feels like. Yep. And I feel like you know a little bit more of what you're getting from Flacco. So do you just hope that Zach Wilson really takes that next step? Or are you like, uh, you don't wish injury on anyone, but it kind of is a blessing in disguise because you get Joe Flacco out there. See, I'm the total opposite. I'm thinking longevity. I need him to get good. If Wilson doesn't get good, there's no hope. Winning a couple of ball games with Joe Flacco ain't saving my job. Right. Because we have to develop that quarterback. So for me... I want him back in the saddle. I want him getting as many reps as he possibly can. I want him hitting the tight end that can help him get completions and first downs and maybe even put some points on the board. I'm like pushing for Wilson to get back out there. Yeah, we'll see how soon he gets back out there. And Wilson, Zach Wilson, not the only one dealing with some injuries. There's some other tight ends that we're going to touch on that are either dealing with injuries, coming back from injuries. Trey McBride may or may not be one of those guys. All right, we're going to talk about all those guys next. But first, we want to talk to you about as you gear up for the fall, 
You need the right people on your team. Help your small business fire on all cylinders. And that's where LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier for you to find the people that you want to talk to. All right, faster and best part about it, for free. Create a job post in just minutes and LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring so your network can really help you find the right people to hire. All right. Simple tools like, you know, screening questions, making it easy to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience that you're looking for. So you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors, all right? LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. And did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? 40 million, guys, like, think about that. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash NFL slash locked on the NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on the NFL to post your job for free today. Terms and conditions apply. So let's talk about some of these guys that might have been a little banged up and we got one guy coming back, right? Trey McBride. And when you pull up your list, Trey McBride, he's sitting there, right yep. there at the top, number seven uh, on your athletic matrix score, number one, film grade. That's the guy that just came back and the targets aren't quite there. We'll see as he continues because they did talk about what they were seeing from him in practice. He's making mm-hmm. big plays. I'm pretty sure the fans are like, okay, well, we want to see that carry over to the actual games. And he had some nice blocks a couple of times where they were running right behind him. But what are your expectations for Trey McBride in that offense as he continues to get healthier? You know, I think in the end with the departure, or departure of some of the, the wide receiver targets, obviously Hop's going to be center focus, right? But Kyler Murray needs somebody to get the ball to in situations that maybe aren't optimal. And I think much like we saw throughout his career at CSU, but also at the Senior Bowl, Trey McBride's going to make some of those plays that maybe you don't think he can make. Over-the-shoulder catches, things in tough situations where he's got to go up and get the ball. He doesn't look like a leaping monster, but he ends up getting the job done in a lot of situations that I think are going to help that offense. And I actually think once he gets rolling, it might be – Maybe a quarter of the season might be six games in. I think he's going to start to get to the point where he's somebody you could feed the ball with targets. Yeah, and this is a guy who is extremely well-rounded with his ability and possesses a lot of athletic ability as well. Uh, Ran in the low four fives, big body, really strong, involved in the run game, but is terrific as a pass catcher. The guy who definitely has a feel for soft spots in zones. The catch and run opportunities, those would be there, especially in this wide open offense for Arizona. And I think that's the thing I'm interested to see in how he acclimates to that and how much it might even help him, a guy who is super productive, right? We talked about some of these other guys, uh, Jake Ferguson, Jeremy Rucker, not as productive in college. Well, that was never an issue for Trey McBride. He was extremely uh, productive in this past season. So now can he be as productive for the Arizona Cardinals? That's definitely going to be something to look forward to. Uh, Another guy that we'll see how he transitions, right? Dealing with an injury right now. They have seen him running on the side of the field, but Greg Dolchek out of UCLA playing for the Denver Broncos. Now, this is a guy who, another one of those guys who was very productive run after catch. It's there. How well do you think he'll get acclimated and how acclimated and how soon to the Denver Broncos and really what Russell Wilson is doing? Because I think that's the big thing there, right? Right. Russell Wilson, he wants to play with timing and stuff, and he'll do some off script stuff. But I think it takes some time for guys to really kind of grasp exactly what he's doing. And Dolchik, being a rookie, is a guy that really needs to be out there so he can build that rapport with his quarterback. I agree, but this might actually be the calm before the storm that actually helps him emerge. Because you got Jerry Judy and you got Cortland Sutton as targets on this roster. Right. You, you lost him, Patrick, who had really built up a, a nice rapport with Russell Wilson, had been going to him quite a bit. Now they have some uh, lower down wide receivers that are trying to make up for that. So in the end, not seeing Dulcich in the preseason is, I don't think, the end of the world. Looks like he might even make it back this week. But if he can emerge slowly through the regular season, he's going to be somebody that in the end, by, the by say, week 12, certainly in the next season, he might end up being the best tight end that, that Russell Wilson's ever played with. I mean, he, I think he has that much potential. And if there is that potential on the outside receivers, I think he's a guy that can make up for that middle ground that they're going to have to use to attack when Russell breaks the pocket. 
And the tight end, I mean, that can be huge for them. Albert O, is he going to be a guy who kind of takes that next step? But right now, you look at what they can do with Greg Dolchik and his athletic ability and really using him as a pass catcher with some of the guys that you just mentioned. I mean, that, that would be so huge for this team that's trying to stay high-powered and keep up with some of the guys in the NFC West. I mean, AFC West, excuse me. Uh, you look at some of the teams, and right now, a, a team that people thought, oh, would they take a step back offensively? I don't have Tyree Hill anymore, but Kansas City Chiefs, I watch them, and I'm like, ah, oh, doesn't look like they're missing a step. Uh, the Oakland, uh, Las Vegas Raiders, that's another team. You see what they have offensively. You talked about the tight end that's over there with Darren Waller and some of the other weapons that they have with, especially Don, Devontae Adams there and their uh, nice slot receiver that they have. I mean, they're locked and loaded, and it, it's just a very loaded uh, division for yeah. sure, especially. I mean, and I haven't even mentioned the the Chargers yet. Right. So the AFC West, you're going to really need to be able to keep up. And I believe for the Denver Broncos, they're going to need a guy like Dolce to be able to take maybe some of the pressure off of Jerry Judy and Cortland Sutton, two guys that you mentioned. Well, yeah, and the other thing is like it puts the nickel defenders in a lot of trouble. Because while Albert can line up in line and he, he can run good patterns, I, I wouldn't like to see him line up in the slot. But Dulcich gives you a big slot. And then if you don't want to go that, you can swap him in for K.J. Hamler. So whoever's in the nickel position is going to have a tough road, whether it's speed one way or power the other and size. Dulcich, I think there's some matchups there to be had. A lot to talk about continuing for this tight end group. And we will be the ones to do it for you. All right, we want to thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen of the day now. Go make Locked On Fantasy Football your second listen. Find the intellectual fantasy expert, Vinny, who brings over 20 years of NFL expertise and a unique angle to give you the moves no one else has. Get ready for your fantasy draft with Locked On Fantasy Football. And, of course, y'all can listen to our shows as well. Locked On 49ers with myself and Brian Peacock. Locked On Chiefs with Ryan Tracy. But that's going to do it for this episode. We'll see y'all tomorrow when we have John Harris join us. Peace.